Yes, hello. Um, this was the guy that was supposed to talk with you to, today. Uh, he called me like a couple of days ago. He said, Kjartan, you need to do a presentation about startups. And that's about all he managed to tell me on the phone. And uh, sometimes at three o'clock last night, I finally managed to write this presentation. Of course, I need to do some adjustments. <laughs> uh, actually, it's not even correct. Uh, I'm not lead, ga lead game designer anymore. Uh, I was more like, uh, well, no, I'm managing director of Shanghai, no, uh, principal game designer, that's the right. Uh, and this goes to show that in a startup, uh, you have to wear many hats during the lifetime. And maybe just to give you a brief background uh, where I come from. I actually, uh, uh, I'm a physicist, uh, got a PhD in, in physics, and that's why I can tout the doctor in front of my name. Uh, but I, it's really not been helping me a lot. The, the founders of both the companies that I've been involved in startups are both college dropouts. <laughs> the only place where I see this actually doing so anything is in Japan, where you get like 10 degree more bow from the people if you have like this on your <laughs> name tag. Uh, after the physics, I was completely fed up with it and I came back to Iceland and I decided to to graphic design in an advertising agency. Actually, my former boss is in the here. I don't, still don't know why he hired me. Uh, but I quickly involved, got involved with the, uh, the burgeoning internet advertising market, which was happening in 94, I guess. Uh, and then I jumped ship to uh, go on the incredible trip that Oz was. And uh, I was the CTO of Oz from 95 to 2001. And by the way, I, I'm a little bit interested how many people have been at Oz or in affiliated company by Oz here in the crowd. Yeah, that's, that's quite good. <laughs> Talking about a network. Uh, and uh, then I joined uh, CCP in uh, 2001 as a lead game designer. So um, the subject of uh, this talk is going to be this, to be or not to be a startup or not to lose it. And uh, the reason for this title is that I, I thought about it the other day in the executive team that suddenly we had the question, are we a startup or not? And uh, after lots of thinking about it, we, we sort of came to the conclusion that we obviously were not a startup anymore. A little bit too big for that. But we all agreed that there was a lot of things that we sort of didn't want to lose from being a startup. So I, here I'm just going to go through a little bit uh, uh, my personal story of uh, startups and uh, how it's entwined with it and try to draw, at least from my personal view, three very simple truths that I think are essential uh, that are like issues with startups and also issues when you grow as a company. And I think it's important not to lose those characteristics. And uh, they, uh, it's not to say that we, for example, at CCP have been very successful in not losing those things, but at least we have being painfully aware of many of those and are actively trying to to keep those. So uh, just like take a brief uh, trip through history and uh, 1994 was the, the big time of the internet coming out. Uh, I remember it was I think the image tag in HTML that made it all happen if I remember correctly. That's when advertising could finally do their stuff. Um, but actually for some of us that was really old-fashioned this internet stuff uh, we were much more into like the virtual reality and being able to you know enter the metaverse through some kind of uh, 3d device and uh, interact there on the network it's kind of a uh, premature but that was basically the the concept that uh, Oz at the time started with we were a very small group of people at the time I think we were about maybe 10, 10 people uh, Gudion Maur was the uh, founder, and uh, Skule Mogensen came in with some fresh money. Uh, and uh, before we knew it, we had the great ambition of rewriting the operating system for the internet to make 3D virtual reality accessible to all and everybody, and makes a lot of money. And uh, this was quite an ambitious plan, obviously. And it, we also went through a lot of Sputnik kind of uh, growth. Uh, and. Uh, which I remember like basically eight months after we started this, we ended up sitting next to Bill Gates and his family and Robert Murdoch offering some drinks at the bar at the 
Allen Company Sun Valley Convention, and we thought it was all normal. But it wasn't. Uh, so one of the, 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 the wisdom that I'd like to draw from, from here, uh, which I think is very important, sounds very banal, but I think it's still something that you need to keep in mind, the question about sharing a vision. And uh, the thing is, is that communicating to other people your thoughts is really, really difficult. Uh, I don't know if you know Ogilvy, famous advertising mogul, once made a study that uh, he put like an advertisement to a group of people and uh, with some text in it and then measured how much people had understood the advertising. Uh, and it figured out that about 30 or 40 percent actually understood it. And this was a message crafted by specialists in communication. So this goes to show that sharing a vision, communicating a vision, is really, really difficult. And uh, that's one of the good things with startups, because you're a small group of people, in many cases good friends, and sharing a vision becomes trivial, because you're basically sitting in the same room all day long and all night long, talking about the stuff the other is passionate about. And uh, this isn't really a problem, so you don't really think about it. But uh, later, as you grow in your company, this become more and more difficult to uh, share that vision. And uh, that is a very bad thing. So uh, you really need to think of ways when you structure, go from a growth, uh, small startup growth to, to a larger company, is how are you going to make sure that everybody shares the vision. And uh, it's a tricky thing to do, because if it's too big a company, you might end up sounding like a corporate messaging, which nobody likes, etc. So um, we are always trying to find ways to do that. I mean, we do Scrum uh, management, Agile, which sort of helps to a certain degree. But still, with multiple offices, it, it, it's all very difficult. But uh, basically, if there's something that you should try not to lose, is your ability to share a vision with the groups of people that are supposed to make it happen. And it's not an easy task. So uh, let's go back a little bit to, to what we were this crazy ideas that we were trying to do there. Uh, obviously, it quickly became apparent that uh, the world was not ready for all of this stuff. Uh, and uh, what uh, Oz at that point needed to do, and uh, we went through a sort of introspection and uh, was looking at, okay, what about all these ideas that we have? How can we factor them? How can we create smaller products out of them, etc.? And uh, we went through a very interesting phase there. And I think it was a kind of a defining moment for many companies that came later from Oz, not maybe directly from Oz, some were spin-offs, some were simply uh, founded by people that had been working in the company at that time. And uh, it was a great entrepreneurial school. We wrote probably like five or six different business plans at the time. And uh, it was really interesting. This was also a defining moment at the time because uh, Reiner, uh, the founder of CCP, also decided at that point that he went on to concentrate on the, on the game side of things, which had been part of the focus that we had. And uh, he founded uh, CCP in 97 and uh, took off. And uh, eventually we were sort of, you could say that we split up in this way, like uh, there was CCP building games. And then uh, Oz uh, went on to uh, concentrate on social networks and communication technology, more like a, a B2B venture than a B2C. And uh, this is like a, was a moment also which was uh, uh, like a, uh, very defining for, for both of these companies. Went through a lot of difficulties. Uh, in the end, for example, Oz went through a restructuring and eventually moved to, to Montreal, where they, uh, where they actually made good on their promise of the social networks and actually made a good amount of money. And Skule Mogensen came back with it to Iceland, which is good. Um, and then uh, we at uh, CCP, and uh, I uh, joined about 2001. The, uh, at that time, we, we were still funded by uh, uh, a round of financing that we got here in Iceland. Uh, but uh, we or were also looking for a publisher, and that wasn't going very well. And uh, in the end, we, we were to the point where we actually couldn't pay salaries for about three months. And uh, hopefully, uh, the, the good thing is that people stayed on the project, which was really nice. And uh, we managed finally to get a publisher. And uh, that got us through to actually launching our product. And uh, one month later, the, the publisher decided to close down their publishing branch. 
And uh, so we were sort of back at square one. But this was really a, a good thing for us because we managed to reacquire the rights and uh, decided to become completely independent and uh, go through online distribution. And this worked extremely well for us. But uh, that leads me maybe to another thing which I think is uh, relatively important, is that uh, managing uncertainty is, is very, uh, a very key attribute in, uh, in managing your business. And uh, a startup has more agility uh, in the sense that maybe there's less to lose. You are maybe a few people and you, you, uh, you can do mistakes and uh, you can react very, rather quickly to mistakes. You can change your plans, etc. At a, at a very short notice. Uh, but uh, in a bigger company, it becomes a little bit more difficult. There's more momentum in it. The risks are bigger. And also there are like, uh, less people experience to, uh, to deal with those. Even though at the upper management, you might have experienced people that dealt with a lot of risk and uncertainties, you ha also have a lot of uh, junior people that can get very terrified when things are not going the way uh, they think they should be going. And I think it's, uh, it's important to keep a culture within the company where people are not afraid of changing things, are not afraid of uh, 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 completely uh, rethinking the product and, and uh, rethinking the markets, etc. But this is something that I think is also uh, a danger to lose when you grow too big. And uh, now for Eve, uh, we go to, the, to this step here. Uh, we're basically this growth period that we had where we finally managed to let it all fit together. And we sort of discovered that we did have a social network, even though it was sort of shed out before. Uh, and it all become, started really making sense again. This world that we were making, we were having good success uh, commercially. And uh, so we sort of like started figuring out that maybe we, we had found the final f magic formula that we were like thinking about uh, 10, 15 years ago, before that. And uh, this also gave us the, the, the uh, opportunity to start thinking about growing and issuing more games. And uh, that also means growing a lot of people. It's kind of difficult to do that only in Iceland. So uh, that also involves opening new offices and uh, uh, facing another problem, which is uh, nurturing culture. And uh, the problem with a uh, company culture is that it's not something that you design. You cannot have a committee that decides at the early phase of a company, let's define our company culture. It's basically something that grows organically, and sometimes you're maybe lucky with it, sometimes you're not, but uh, it's, it's not something that is easy to manage. And uh, the, the, the culture in a, in a startup is usually pretty casual, there are a few uh, reporting lines, and uh, uh, most people know each other, etc. But these kind of cultures don't necessarily scale, and uh, they might not also be exportable. And uh, personally, uh, like, uh, uh, after uh, that Eve was on the right track uh, in 2005, uh, we started uh, thinking about uh, expanding to the markets in, in China. And uh, it was decided that I would go there to Shanghai to uh, start up our first new office. And uh, it was kind of interesting Then I realized really what my task was, was not really to uh, to uh, build the, uh, the, uh, the product as such, but the most important thing was to how to you seed the culture of the company such that you don't end up with a, another office which is completely alien to our home office because that wouldn't work uh, to, to, to work collectively in the company. And uh, what I was faced with when I came to China is that this is what's pretty much the, the company cultures in game companies in China. And, uh, uh, this was kind of a culture shock, but uh, you shouldn't underestimate. It's not only China. We also had like uh, you can also have culture shock with uh, the United States, for example. It's a very different culture than the Icelandic corporate culture. But uh, I'm just talking about China in this case because this is what I was like faced with every day. And um, yeah, we ended up doing basically this. And uh, the our Chinese employees even they thought this was silly. 
you know, why do you give us so much space? Why do we have like these big screens all over and you know, comfy chairs? They 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 weren't quite buying it, but after a while they got accustomed to it, and and uh, I think we managed sort of to make a cultural change as well. So it's it's not only us that had to change, but also our employees. Uh, maybe it was related to the management style as well. In China, the the management style is very hierarchical. The boss is the the, the grand uh, master of everything, and uh, it's not to be spoken to except if asked questions. Uh, my management style was a little bit more like this. And uh, I think that in the end we, we ended up with a, with a, with a pretty good uh, sort of office which captured a little bit of our company culture. Um, and it's about 120 people now. And uh, we are uh, retaining the people also very uh, a lot, which has always been a problem in China. And I think that uh, this is where it's valuable to, to think about this. And uh, if you have a good company culture, it helps sharing the vision, like I said before. It also helps handling crisis. But most importantly, it makes it like something that people look forward to going to in, in the morning, going to work, because there's something exciting happening, and uh, they have fun there. And uh, this is not trivial, and we, we've not always been good at it. Uh, and like I said, it's very subjective and delicate, it's difficult to measure or quantify. So uh, it's a, like a, a little bit like a dark art of managing this. But this is something that you should definitely think about when you start growing. It won't happen automatically that your company culture is going to grow or scale or export. Um, so uh, if we look today where we are with uh, this brand scheme of ours, uh, we, we basically have this big product, Eve, we're now launching our second product, Dust, which actually is related to this, uh, to, to Eve, in one big thing that we call the Eve Universe. We have all these different devices connecting it, different languages, billing system, all kinds of people, all kinds of markets accessing this. This is the world we're making, and this is sort of a vision that was shared from, like I said, nearly 20 years ago. There is like a red thread going all the way back to there. And that shows you how much time these things can take. But now we, feel, we finally feel that we are at the point where we can uh, really start capitalizing on this. And uh, maybe we are at the point where us uh, was in 2000 and we'll start being having like a, a boring time after this. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, like uh, I basically just wanted to iterate these three points. There are probably 100 more points which are important, but these are the ones that I could think of. It's basically trying to keep the culture of uh, sharing a vision, make it effective, and make that such that everybody understands what we're doing and why. Uh, retaining the agility to change is very important, especially when you're in a vol very volatile market. And uh, taking care of the company culture and not, not assuming that it will just stay there or, or grow with you. And uh, that's about all that I had to say. Thank you.